First of all, it's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And the first thing I want to do is, is ask for three volunteers. There's one. Well, no, you take it out of the box. You figure out what it is and you set it up. And then tell us, uh, tell us about your experience. I'm going to talk to you about an organization called IDE that I started 25 years ago. And when I reached the young age of uh, 72, I decided it was time to hand it over. So uh, we've now appointed my successor and I've started a new organization. But this organization has been very successful. IDE, it works in 10 uh, countries in, in the developing world and it's brought 17 million people out of poverty. And our objective is to uh, reach another 150 million over the next 15 years. So I'm going to talk to you about how this happened. Um, it's been much more successful than any of us anticipated at the beginning. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about what we learned. Um, I also have a book here called Out of Poverty, uh, which is just coming out in February. It took me five years to write a measly 200 pages. Uh, but I wrote the book to help create a revolution in how we think about poverty and what we do about it. And that's also what I'm going to be uh, presenting to you briefly today. And if, if there is a question while I'm talking, please feel free to interrupt. How are we doing over, over here on this project? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> First thing I want to say is that with business as usual, our current attempts to end poverty will surely fail. And here are some uh, examples. Here are the results of, uh, many of you probably have heard about the Millennium Development Goal Project. This is a very uh, ambitious project led by uh, the United Nations to cut in half the number of people in the world who <coughs> live on less than one dollar a day. There are 1.2 uh, billion of them. Here are the results of that initiative between 1990 uh, and 2002 in Sub-Saharan Africa. The uh, percentage of people living on less than a dollar a day plummeted from 44.6% over 12 years to 44.0%. The actual numbers, the absolute numbers went up. Uh, the numbers of people living uh, on less than two dollars a day also went up. Now Sub-Saharan Africa is perhaps an unfair example because uh, there have been much better results reported in Asia but a lot of those results depend on China, which had a disastrous uh, period in history under Mao's government where 40 million people starved to death. And during the same time period, just about any change would be better. And uh, in fact, they actually went through a process of decollectivization where small farmers were allowed to produce for the market, which uh, made things much better. If you take that out of the equation, the results in Asia are also not very encouraging. Next slide. I think one of the biggest problem is what I call the three great poverty eradication myths. The first is that you can donate people out of poverty. The leader of the UN Millennium Movement to end poverty is Jeff Sachs, an economist who is, uh, who's had a remarkable track record in macroeconomic, ma macroeconomics in Bolivia. He halted the inflation overnight. But now that he's working on poverty, the essential assumption of his approach is that people who survive on less than a dollar a day are too poor to invest in their own ending of poverty. So he believes that pretty much you have to donate things to poor people uh, so that they can get started. Uh, my experience over 25 years is that Poor people have to invest their own time and money to move out of poverty. And there are some very specific things that they need to be helped with. But unless they're ready to invest their own time and money, uh, it's probably not going to work. And, but more than that, if you pour a huge amount of donated equipment, donated experts, and large technology into any country, 
you actually undercut people's ability to move out of poverty themselves. And at the end, uh, things are about the same or somewhat worse. These things are destined to fail. The second big uh, assumption is that you can end poverty through national GDP, per capita GDP growth. <coughs> Much of development practice today and the uh, initiatives to end poverty is led by the economists. Most of the economists have macroeconomic views. That is, it's the national economy that you have to change. And uh, the problem with national uh, GDP per capita growth is that it's basically focused in cities uh, and in industrial growth. And while the economists are right that since the Industrial Revolution, there have been waves of economic growth that have brought a lot of people out of poverty, the dollar-a-day people now who are left behind are in remote rural areas that tend not to be affected much by national economic growth. So economic growth is necessary, but it has to be in the remote rural areas where most of the dollar-a-day people live, not national. The best example of this uh, about national GD GDP growth is if Bill Gates earns a billion dollars a year and I earn $500 a year, it gives me scant comfort to realize that the average salary of my income in Bill Gates is, what is it, less uh, $500 million, $225 a year. That's the problem with GDP growth. The the problem of poverty is local and it tends to be primarily rural. The third one is the most tantalizing myth and that is that multinationals and big business as it is now will end poverty. The people that I've talked to who are poor, and I have interviewed now more than 3,000 of them personally, tell me that the most important thing they need to get out of poverty is to earn more money. If the major problem is earning more money, who after all knows more about that than multinationals? But the problem is that unless multinationals, as they are now, uh, go through a revolution in how they design, price, and market their products and services, they will not have a big impact on the poor. You can't simply uh, have an impact on poverty through business, with business as usual, or with cosmetic changes in the current products. Uh, for instance, we've le heard a lot about a laptop computer and the $100 laptop. Uh, but you have a billion people in the world who can't read and write. What are they going to do with a laptop even if it's given to them? You see what I mean? So you have to design a radically different information device to reach these people. Here is the, the real center of the problem of dollar-a-day poverty in the world. 800 million of the 1.2 billion people who earn less than a dollar a day live and earn their living from tiny farms, typically one acre, with scattered quarter acre plots. Small farms in the world are very, very big, but you wouldn't know it when you hear about agricultural policy. And here is some data for you. Um, of the, there are 525 million farms in the world. 85% of the farms in the world, all the farms in the world, are less than five acres. You wouldn't know it uh, in, in terms of what you read about agriculture. Uh, average farm size in Africa is four acres. That means the dollar a day farms are much smaller. Farms under five acres represent about half of all cultivated land in developing countries. And farm size, the economists say in a free marketplace, small farms will be replaced by big farms. That's happening in the United States and Europe and Canada. In developing countries, farms are getting even smaller because of population growth. This, this is what these farmers are like. So small farmer prosperity is, is the key to ending rural poverty, and that, in essence, is what IDE has done. It's, it's worked primarily on finding ways for one-acre farmers in developing countries who live on less than a dollar a day to increase their income from farming. It seems very obvious, and some of the big things that make a difference in the world are fairly obvious and simple when you get down to it.